Hello all, welcome to rotenis.com. This is a continuation series regarding the customer import, and this is the third session on the with respect to customer imports. Earlier we have discussed about the simplified spreadsheet and then the bulk import, and now in this today's session we'll discuss about bulk import, but considering a real time scenario, and we know that this particular customer import using a bulk import is one of the complicated data migration FBDI in Oracle. So that's why what we do is we'll try to discuss about this in detail. Like a partial information we'll discuss initially, like the, we'll try to create a sample customer with a, just a minimal set of data. And later on, we'll be coming up with a different set of series, series with different scenarios. So in today's discussion, we'll just try to concentrate on how do we create a customer account and site as well as site views. Okay. So let's see the steps to perform import. The first step is we have to get the FBDI template. Then we have to generate a batch identifier. Then we have to fill up the template and generate a zip file. Then load the data into the interface table and then perform the import, right? So now we'll just try to, let me show you the sample FBDI which I have populated and we'll try to validate from the print end. And also we'll try to prepare a sim similar data and try to upload it, okay? So now first thing is, let us see the data which I have uploaded. So the data which I have uploaded just now is or our trainings 1010. So this is my party number. So my, what I can do is I'll just try to search the data like uh, let me navigate again for your understanding purpose i'm clicking i just clicked on home and then i'll navigate to receivables and click on billing and here on the task list customer manage customer so you can search the data based on a registry id nothing but a party number organization name account number, account description, and also we can click on advanced and you can search based on the site number and some other additional fields. And now I'm trying to create search the data of customer type organization. If it is a person, you have to select person. So I'll enter my party number, click on search. Now here, if you observe, this is a party header data. Registry is nothing but party number. This is the party name and the usage is just click here and uh, it tells you like uh, for which purpose it is used. Now, this is the purpose it is getting used. And the source here, just see. And the source, it says comma separate values and also click on this icon. It shows the org references, org reference which it is used for. So we'll try to understand what is this all about. For now, just consider that this is a source reference at party level. And similarly, an organization or a party can have a number of accounts. Now, for this party, we have this account. And here, what we do is, like, uh, if at all, if you don't see the additional reference column, just click on view and columns show all. And you can see the some additional columns and which you want to understand this are reference value. So whenever you work with the migration data, whenever you are trying to upload a customer using the ABD template, this org references plays a very crucial role. And these are unique for each particular party or account or across your particular customer. And these references are available at the party level, account level, site level, site use level, as well as location level also. Okay. Now, this is the account detail, account description, and this is a reference. As of now, you could see that like uh, all the values are same, but in real time, the values of references and the values which you see here will be different. I mean to say, these references are only for the backend purpose. This is not for the end user purpose. These are only for the developer purpose, as well as reconciliation purpose for which they use it. And generally, these references will not be shown to the end user. They are of no use for them. And this account number is a crucial value which on which you will have a transaction. Now, coming to the next one, under account, you have a site. And a site number is, again, a very much important value, site number. And it is linked to a particular address set. And also, it will it will have, a, you know, like a, the address details. And click on site number. Under the site, you will have a site use. And it can be a bell to ship to, you know, like a different purposes. And this is how it is. So now what we have done is if you observe carefully, we have created four entities. One is customer party or nothing but organization. I will say organization, account, site, as well as site use. And there is one more thing called location, which you may not see. I mean, which like uh, you don't see the individual entity of location, but you can see that it is it, it is assigned to a site level as well as a party level. Okay. Now we'll try to prepare a similar data. And let us understand how do we prepare that data, right? So now the first thing is you have to identify what is your ERP version, like nothing but whether it is a 22D or a 23D or 23A, just click on this effort, this application and find out what is the current version, 22D. Based on this ERP version, get the exact version template. Now, once you got the template, 
and uh, the first and foremost important thing you have to do is if you observe carefully i have highlighted the sheets which you, we are supposed to fill up for this today's session so now the first column is batch identifier so now how do we get the batch identifier is what you do is click on home and again sorry click on building we were already there click on building task list and click on manage data import now here you could see the list of batches which are already there and anyway you can just have your appropriate naming convention click on create and mention the batch name so i'll just go with my convention batch 011 nothing but 11th batch and source system is comma separated values when you're doing a migration you either you can configure a new source system or either you can use an existing source system it all depends upon your business decision now we have created a batch and it generated a batch id and the batch status is active it means that it is not yet imported so click on this one get the batch id copy a batch id and now what we have to do is so this batch id so here i'll copy here for now so this batch id we have to populate in this seven sheets so these are the seven sheets which i am trying to import now i mean which for which i'll provide a data party party side party side uses account account side account side uses as well as location total seven sheets and in the front end you would have seen only four entities okay these are like for party side party side use they are shown internally and they are linked to the account okay now let's start with the first one the first one is i'll just modify the batch id okay now this references right this references which are very much important and unique so i'll mention the value as 1011 so nothing but wherever is 10 i'll just replace with 11 and this also i'll give a suffix as 11 so on the party level these are the these are the only fields i entered and the party's original source system is csv i mentioned because when you when i created a batch i mentioned it as comma separate value and you can just go with the task manage trading community trading community source system there you can find what is the system as well as system description and now here i just entered only the mandatory fields which are required at the party level right so first one is batch identifier source system party original system and the party type either you can have a party like a person or an organization and usage code go with the customer and your organization name and if it is a person you have you should have mentioned the first name last name and all those things next thing is party site first of all change the batch id and now wherever you have a references so here this is a party original system so party site is linked to party so definitely you have to mention this parent information and even the all the relevant entities also will have a source system as well as source system references generally whatever you mentioned the party level as a source system you have to better go with the same source system for the chain entities also and of course as of now we are entering the data manually but in real time you don't you don't prefer to enter the data manually right you will be getting all this data in extracted like by like uh, the source system will provide you the data in this particular form it does not need to enter like we does not need to create data manually but initially for working like to for a pvc purpose or a validation purpose definitely you need to prepare the data and now so this party site here if you observe party site is having a dependence on the party and we mentioned that 1011 and this is this are party site references unique value and it is having a dependence on the location so i'll mention the location also location with third sheet i mean final sheet i mean to say and next here also change it to 11 okay and the remaining like here if you observe these are the very much important mandatory fields and these are the data of your party site mention the identifier if at all if you want to mention remaining you can ignore Similarly, go to party site users. Party site users, first of all, change the batch identifier. Next one is here. And mention the purpose and this one. Okay. Party site use depending upon party as well as party site. That's why you have two references, and this is a reference of your party site use. And now coming to account, account is depending upon account will be depending upon the party so you'll have a party information as well as the appropriate account information also so we have to be very careful when we change the data and for account level only these are the mandatory fields of course you have the remaining fields but uh, i'm trying to enter only the mandatory fields now next one account sites account site will have a dependence on account party party site and other important field for the account site is the address set okay 
So you have to set the address set code that while creating a customer account site, you can see the address set. You have to mention that that appropriate or I can show you right away. So, Okay, so now if you just click here, account address set, this address set name, and we have to mention the address set code, which is a mandatory field, and it is important when you are trying to, when you are like uh, using this account during your AR invoice receivable application purpose, right? This address set code we have to mention. Next one. What is sites? here next we have to mention the purpose bill to and uh, address it here also account site account site use level both levels you have to mention the address set okay and it says address set id but you have to mention address set code it's a bug within the vdi itself so if you observe right it says number but actually it has a customers it's a var cap you have to mention the address set code not the number so yeah, next final one, go to the location and here this one. So location is an independent entity and you don't have any dependence on other entities if you observe carefully. And yeah, make sure that you mention the appropriate batch ID files. It's of no use, do not work properly. Let us review again and then we'll finish it off. So, and the batch ID is seven to seven, right? Batch ID is seven to seven. And we are going with the references, all the references with ending with 11, right? And let's see again, seven to seven and all references ending with 11. So in when you're working with initially, like you may have some kind of bottlenecks, but you know, you have to be very careful while preparing the data so that it will be very easy. 11, seven to seven, 11, 11, 11. Okay, now let's see the final one. Location, seven to seven and look in, 11. So now what is the next step? So we have to generate the zip file, right? So let me remove my existing zip file. I'll copy the location and click on generate CSV file. Okay. Now it is in this location, click on save. If it is in different location, you can mention the location. Now here, if you observe, click on the zip file, you can see that like uh, there are seven sheets. Now copy this location. Now go to the instance, go to the click on navigator, click on tools, schedule processes, click on schedule new process. Now search the job load interface file for import. Click on OK. Now here search import reading community data in bulk. Yeah, if it does not give you properly, then simply click on search and again search like this. This is the easiest way. Now upload the data file. This is a file which we have generated. Click on submit. Make a note of the job ID. If at all, if your instance is used by multiple developers, so that you know it is difficult to trace out your job ID, so you have to be very careful. So it will take a couple of seconds. So here you could see that like a load file for interface should be seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and transfer file is one thing. And all of them should be success, then only the parent will be success. If it is success, then only we can perform the next job. So now this is almost done. Let's wait till it succeeded. It is done. And what's the next step? Now go to receivables. Now, as of now, this step has performed loading the data into interface table only. Nothing but as per our slide, if you observe, we have finished the fourth step. 
okay we have finished the fourth step loading the data into the interface table now there is one more last step pending now what you have to do go to receivables and billing and here you have to click on task list manage data import now this is a batch which is active as of now here click on actions click on import and this step what it will do is it will read the data for this specific batch id from the interface table perform validation and then load into base table now click on next nothing to change click on next and at this step you can run the you can run the same batch in two modes one is in the preview mode other one is a direct load so preview mode is nothing but it will just simply validate and it says the status it it provides you the status of each entity whether it is you got any error or maybe like any fail data failure you can fix it and again again you know like you can correct the data but again you have to create a new batch okay and this step what it will do is it will try to upload the data directly if it is if you get any errors definitely like it will provide you the provide you the error and it will it can perform partial load also okay when you are working on this one initially with any real time data or a production data make sure that you run in the preview mode that is a very much recommended if it is a normal development environment yes either either of the options should be fine but if it's a production always try to run in the preview mode and try to correct as much as data you you can you perform the real import okay now i'm going with the preview mode because it's just a demo instance so i don't have any issue even if it is not working i can again retry and correct it and re, re upload right okay now click on submit so now the status will change from active to pending and it may take again a couple of seconds or a minutes based on the data load which you have it And here, if you observe the customer, this will have 19 entities as per our FBT sheet. And based on the data which we have uploaded, it will have the appropriate information here. Right now, it is still in processing. That is why it shows zero everywhere. Once it gets the information, it will populate the information accordingly. By this, we can easily understand for a particular entity what happened, which one inserted, which one errored out, and what is the issue. Okay, then just click on refresh. And total records as of now it identified seven because we have populated the data in each entity and seven sheets you have uploaded so for now it is okay let's wait again yeah so now it is still loading right so as of now it is not finished yet and we could see that account got inserted and account site got inserted also account site use also got inserted so when account site use got inserted it means that definitely i can say all of them got inserted because until unless parent is not inserted child will not work right so i'm assuming that you know like i can see that location got inserted party party site party site use also got inserted and definitely this will, total will be imported and it will be succeeded so let's wait anyway And the final status should be completed. That when it the status is completed, then only you can say that all got imported successfully. If at all, if you have a status like completed with errors, definitely make sure that you validate what is inserted and what has failed. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, yeah, total got imported seven. That's it. Of course, the status may get changed in a couple of seconds. Yeah, done. Perfect. Then you can just click on this batch. If at all, if you got an error, you can click on this report and you can see which particular entity got failed and what is the reason. It will have clear information and you know using that information as a source, you can fix it. Now we can search our data. So as of now, let us go there. Class detail. Manage customer. And our data expected is like uh, it is ending with 11, right? Let's try. This is one, right? And we could see all the 11s, right? One, 11, 11. And for customer side, you can't, you can't see the reference if at all. If you want to see the reference, you can see it only from backend. For only party and account level, you can see the reference, but remaining, you can't see the reference from the UI, okay? So this is all about, you know, like a customer import. And as of now, we have just worked on only, only on the four entities, but in later on, in upcoming session, I'll try to work on customer profile. How do we update the data as well as how do we create a customer profile? different set of entities we'll discuss in later session. Thank you.